debate some of these issues. I was joined here earlier by Dennis Canavan, Chairman of Yes Scotland, and businessman John Boyle of Better Together. And when I say debate, that's uh, putting it mildly. Looking at today's statements by various banks, I started by asking Mr Boyle if it was unionist politicians who were creating financial uncertainty by opposing a currency union. Nothing could actually be further from the truth. In the last couple of days, we've had almost an avalanche of economic alarm. You cannot dispute fa the facts, and I think that Alex Hammond and John Swinney can, can't dance around their briefcases any longer. The, the fact of the matter is companies like the Royal Bank of Scotland, Standard Life, um, the Bank of Scotland, have, and today the Clydesdale Bank here in Glasgow, have said that they will relocate their headquarters, in the case of the Clydesdale Bank, to Bradford. Now, that is not, as Alex Salmon said, a technical matter. When you move your headquarters, you move control of your business into England, and that's your tax point. In one simple way, all of those banks who pay billions of pounds of taxes currently to the United Kingdom, and Scotland get their share of it, that would be lost to Scotland. Scotland would be impoverished to that is, degree. My point is they feel they have to put these contingency arrangements in place because of the financial uncertainty created by the fact that the, the no, better standard together life, politicians... Standard Life, for example, 92% of their business is in England, 8% is in Scotland. Why would they have their head office in Edinburgh, Edinburgh as a separate nation rather than being the United Kingdom? It's simply a fact that we are going to lose thousands of good quality jobs in the financial sector, that is not scaremongering fact. Mm. We're, going to, mm. we're going to lose billions of pounds in tax revenue, not scaremongering, a fact. And this is, an, this is just exactly, there can be no further distancing ourselves from this. It's an economic reality that we have got to face. It is not Dennis, about uncertainty, it's a factual state of affairs. Dennis Canavan, people are worried. People are worried about their mortgages, their pensions, um, it, the prices in the supermarket. Are they not right to be? It, 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 people are, are worried, but uh, let's put this into perspective. I mean, um, we've seen a lot of this irresponsible scaremongering before. We saw it at the time of the 1979 referendum. We saw it at the time of the 1997 referendum. All the prophets of doom and gloom saying the sky was going to fall in. Uh, and none of that happened. Uh, the Scottish economy if, has flourished uh, since devolution. And I think with more economic powers and more powers for business, it would, in fact, make uh, business even more successful. And, you know, this business about uh, the, the, uh, the changing the headquarters... I mean, Sir George Matheson, who's a very well-respected former chairman and former chief executive of the Royal Bank of Scotland, has pointed out very accurately that is simply changing the brass plate from, say, Edinburgh down to London. Nothing it, could, it no, is. Nothing could, it is. Nothing it could is. be further. It is. One it is because hey, it's, it's not time. going to shift operations. It's not going to shift jobs Excuse at all. Me. In fact, the jobs will stay in Edinburgh if Edinburgh workers are seen to be more competitive, more efficient, whereas it is the accommodation costs pay, where, and the staff costs are far more superior me, in, in, in London. So they're not going to move to where London. Would it's common pay, sense, John. Where would they common sense. Dennis Canavan... Ask, Where will they pay questions? their taxes? If they're headquartered in London, they'll pay their taxes in London. Scotland will not get a share of that revenue. Gradually, if your centre of operations is... And we're not scaremongering. This is not going to happen overnight. But over a, short, a shortage period of time, jobs in standard life, the Bank of Scotland, Royal Bank of Scotland, will erode and move to England. Not only that, the tax base will erode. Mm -hmm. And you cannot avoid the fact it is not a blast brass plate. It is not a technical thing. It's in the tax, the words of the Taxation Act, management and control defines your tax point. Your tax point is where you manage and control and that will be where your headquarters are and that will mean there'll be no taxes for Scotland and you're going to lose jobs. Fact. You cannot <laughs> avoid economic reality. With an independent Scotland, it will be up to the, the Scottish Parliament to determine the tax regime in which Scotland operates, including the taxation of financial operations which take place in, in, in Scotland. In an independent right? Scotland, you and, won't have and I, I would hope, I would hope that we would end the tax evasion which is at present taking place right, left and centre I, because I, of the mismanagement of the UK economy. I, I would... And, I, uh, you will not have... If, if we vote yes and become a separate and, and disengaged United Kingdom, there will not be a single bank headquartered in Scotland. 
fact. There will not be That's a single... Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Claisel have said they're moving. The Bank of Scotland have said they're moving. The Royal Bank of Scotland have said well, they're we'll, moving. We'll, we'll see. You we'll can't even talk about... Boyle, we'll can I just do. ask you I... this? These are contingency plans, and Indeed. they're pre presumably contingency plans if there is no formal monetary union. But there's not to say that there's not going to be formal monetary union, is it? I mean, I we don't know I th this. I, I, I know that, uh, you know as a fact, when the Governor of the Bank of England, the head of all the political parties, say it is simply strategically impossible to have monetary union when you control the taxes, the interest rates... He said rates. no such thing. The, he said you no such cannot thing. have monetary union. No. It is an illusion. No. It will not no. happen. No. It is not no. scaremongering. No. It's an economic fact. But, uh, John, you, you don't understand the difference between a currency union I and, do. and fiscal I union. No, do. you don't. No, you don't. Because it is quite possible to have a currency union while at the same time determining within Scotland a whole range of taxation measures, including measures which might help uh, business and, and might help workers too because I'm concerned that this debate should not simply be about big businessmen like I, yourself. I'm not it should be about workers and workers' rights Dennis and Canavan, I want to see more work opportunities exactly for the people of Scotland. Well, if, you, if, you if you go to Waterloo Place in Glasgow today, <laughs> look at the angst on the workers' faces whose jobs are going to be relocated to Bradford when the Clydesdale moves. Do you, I'm not... I'm not about big business, I'm about the economic prosperity of Scotland and I am very pro, and I agree with you about the, the taxation. I would come down upon Amazon, I would come down upon all mm -hmm. those people that avoid their taxes, Good. people that operate their affairs in Luxembourg mm -hmm. and Ireland. So do not, uh, do not lump me in with that. What I'm saying to you, I'm looking after the jobs, Scottish jobs. You are going to have an exit of jobs, no. whether you like it or not, because companies is... are going to have to relocate really to England. Right, for legal kind of reasons. Answer, please, you must John think Boyle. that the working class of Scotland are pretty stupid. I don't. Because there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of them, more and more, including traditional Labour supporters and trade unionists who are coming over to our side. Why? Because they want social justice, they want job security, they want trade union rights, they want a fairer Scotland. Yes, a more prosperous Scotland, but they also want a fairer Excuse Scotland me, instead of spending billions of pounds on things like Trident and cutting the benefits of, of I children. Am more, I, I, I am passionately for workers' rights. I, I am very pro-trade unions. I am absolutely committed to all that area. What I am not committed to is a whole level level of uncertainty that's going to jeopardise it. Well, one other thing, well, Sally. Have, one a word, have a word with your pal, Alistair Darling, then, and tell him to stop all this nonsense about refusing to face up to the reality of a currency union in no, the immediate aftermath of a year's result. There is not a scintilla of possibility in the history of the universe when you've had the bank of the governor of the Bank of England, all three parties, the it is not that said nothing of the sort. It is not you're practical. What the, you're the you're what trying Mr. to said. dance round your briefcase here, as I said. That's what Alex Sam has been doing. A currency union is not possible because oh, yes, why would you oh, want yes, to be independent and then we, have a currency we, union when England dictate interest rates, spending rates we, and everything else? And one of the things everything else. Te a technical <laughs> point: a currency union is possible. A currency and, and a the governor of the Union Bank of England said it wasn't compatible a, a, a with a viable, a viable currency, a viable currency union. You can have people. Do, uh, people don't um, understand they've been using the pound sterling and sterlingisation. But what's most important today has happened is that Britain's most respected retailer, Sir Charlie Mayfield from John Lewis, backed up by ASDA. Just, to, just okay, today, Jumbo. have also said that what is going to happen, you will have a situation where prices in Scotland in, invariably are going to rise. Nonsense. Tesco they said were, the opposite. No, Tesco said the opposite. Well, well yes, they I did. think, gentlemen, yes, they gentlemen did. This, is, this has been a, a, a fascinating debate. Thank you both very much indeed. I didn't have very much to do there at all, but I think it was quite right to, to hear the arguments there on both sides. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. OK, John. There you go. <laughs> And believe it or not, the pair of them went off practically hand in hand, very happily. Now, all this week, our roving referendum correspondent has been dispatched to different parts of the country to speak to local voters and campaigners. Tonight, she's in Stirling. Laura.